Let's get the read from uh, market watcher Heather Zumaraga. We got UBS senior vice president Jim LeCamp, Barron's associate publisher Jack Otter, and uh, my colleague and making money host Charles Payne. Charles, um, I would imagine the, the, the China thing is the more urgent concern for the time being. But is that is it the worry that this drags on longer? Are you sure? Because we've got these hard deadlines, uh, and you know, at some point, the Trump administration is going to have to take action. Uh, on, on, these, on these promises, right? So we're talking $150 billion worth of, um, of, of additional tariffs on some of these items. You know, one a big news item on this that no one talked about yesterday, ARM Holdings, uh, it's a semiconductor company, uh, was the, once the largest in the U.K., recently bought by SoftBank, was forced to give their Chinese joint venture partner 51% of the company yesterday. Forced. We're talking about wow. a, a company that was sold for $33 billion. Uh, a te te technology giant was forced to do this. It underscores what this is all about. It's not just about the imbalance You'd with respect even to in trade. This environment, but they're going by the, the, whatever the rules are on the books right now. Right? They were forced to do this. And that means all of the technology that they've ever created ultimately went up in the hands not of just their Chinese competitors, but the Chinese government. Jim, what's going on here, though? I, I know there are separate issues regarding the about Mueller investigation, who's going to talk and when, how many questions the president will get if he does, uh, and how involved they can be. Um, but I would imagine the China thing as well is it, providing a sort of a double excuse to stand back, right? Well, nobody really cares about the stripper news or yeah, what he what he paid to a stripper. What people right, care well, could about you, is could you whether stop it's that for a be... second because I think that's how I'm leading on my floor. But I will not <laughs> lead with the stripper story at four. Go ahead. <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, you're you're worried about various things in the market. It used to be inflation. It used to be the Treasury or the yield curve. But predominantly, right now, it is absolutely the trade uh, tension. And not only would that impact the U.S., it would impact China, it would impact global trade. You'd have other losers like Korea and Taiwan. And, and so it, it, it destroys a big narrative of this bull market that we've had, which has been global growth and U.S. growth. And look what it's already doing to U.S. companies with the soybean, with the Chinese not buying soybeans. That's a big move. That's a, a big saber rattling by China in imposing a 25 percent uh, tariff on soybeans. So, there's a lot going on that we are concerned about in the market. We're not worried about Stormy Daniels, although we might end up being worried about obstruction of justice. So I think for today, it's trade wars. For tomorrow, these other things are, are, are going to be another thing that we worry about. By the way, you were mentioning the soybean thing. There were reports, and they began um, out in Asia, where um, the Chinese have apparently stopped buying American soybeans altogether. Um, again, there's no way. To prove that, I mean, the anecdotal reports certainly given the fall off in soybean prices, that would seem to, to reinforce some, some rational. And there's a, li there's a little yeah. bit of there's a little bit of sleight of hand going on with that because right. of the, the seasonal way they can order their soybeans. But they make no mistake, they need our soybeans, and make no mistake, our soybean farmers need to sell it to China. So it's a it's a good dual relationship. But they can stagger the way they buy soy, soybeans around the world based on who plants it and harvests it when. Uh, ultimately, later All this right. summer, they're going to have to buy U.S. soybeans or they're going to have a real problem over there. All right, if you're saying that we're going to lead with soybeans over Stormy Daniels, <laughs> I'm saying that's, a, that's a dicey one there. Um, Jack, I, it is interesting, though, if we're already getting into these fighting positions here where the Chinese, they must realize, all right, the president is sending his entire economic, you know, super action heroes here. And it, it kind of does have a feeling of, yeah, we're here, we're here. And, and the Chinese are saying, yeah, we see you here. But, but you're not going to get what you think you're going to get. Well, first of all, uh, this is why you're the anchor and he's not. Yeah, you, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, exactly. He doesn't um, play with the cosmetic and right. stuff. Yeah. So here's what I would say. I, as you know, am not a fan of the Trump tactics, and I am a fan of free trade. But all of that said, I'm not worried yet because, look, what you do well, because is something Chinese like this. Don't is, practice you, <laughs> no, so well, exactly, you're fair. absolutely right. You're absolutely the right. The president might, his and alternative and his strategy might... Not exactly enthralled enthusiasts, but but he is right to point out that they don't. He, he is. He is absolutely right. I'm just I'm talking tactically, not strategically. Um, but the key point here is you always under promise and over deliver. So everyone's talking tough right now. 
and if this were a conventional thing, they'd be, they'd be really downplaying it, and then they'd come out with a good deal. So we may very well solve this problem. And look, sometimes I've been proven wrong. Donald Trump's bluster appears to be doing some good with the North Korea, South Korea thing. So maybe it's going to work here, well, too. you know, Charles, you were the first to see that possibility. I, I do want to go to Heather Zamaraga on this and whether it feeds doubts. I mean, you know, you don't like to see this mushroom into something, but it could, as I said, with reports that the Chinese have stopped buying soybeans as well, Heather, that they uh, might get a slap from the United States, particularly some of their telecom equipment makers, I believe I left that out, uh, and selling that stuff here in the United States. That could have a big effect here because it could lift the prices of a lot of telecom-related equipment in the United States. Um, that's yeah. something consumers would feel fast. You're right, they would, but I think it is a more surgical approach that they are open to taking uh, the U.S. trade team in, t in terms of how do we punish China for theft or stealing intellectual property. Uh, and, and the example of the recent forced, uh, forced issue that just happened that Charles mentioned. And that's what they're going after right now. So a more surgical approach, like high tariffs on perhaps technological technology products coming out of China, that would be better than just blanket tariffs across the board. So they're sitting down at the negotiating table today. Uh, they're going to wrap up tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. That will have an impact on the markets. So that's why the markets are down today, um, as well as some inflation moves. And I think these tariffs are just going to put further pressure on prices, as you mentioned. So that's why we have this. Uh, the markets don't know which way to move, and China is going to move the markets. And we could see it be a lot different. And Charles always reminds me of this. Whatever you're looking at at noon Eastern time could be very, very different by 4 p.m. Yeah, and I readily sure. acknowledge that. But, Charles, I think the next step in this, if it lingers on, on if it gets nasty, and these things tend to, at right. least in the past, uh, then there's sort of like a moment the American people are either going to have to be reminded or told or assuaged, whether it's coming from the president or not, you're, you're, it's going to be a bit painful. But it's to make a bigger point. How will that go down? Well, I think he, President Trump has begun to do that. You know, for the last three or four weeks, I've been saying that he should do it better or more forcefully. Although, I will tell you, uh, on during the campaign, uh, when he started talking about this kind of stuff as he was running for president, I put out in social media often, are you prepared, potential Trump voters, to pay more? 99.9% .9 said yes. Really? And I asked the same question right now. it's one thing for right. throw I know. it out there and another thing to have I know, but I'm saying when I ask the question now, 99.9% .9 say yes. And I, equate, I don't buy that. I, I know. I don't listen, I equate, said, it, it, do you want to be thin? 99.9% .9 say yes. <laughs> no, but I do equate it, though, to when Americans bought war bonds in World War II that weren't going that, that to mature for 30 or 40 years. They didn't do it for the payoff. They did it because they thought the payoff well, was greater than economic. Sure you make that patriotic connection. Right? Well, the, the President well, Trump's got to make sure he does that. that and he can't do it in a tweet. Too. Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. It's interesting that you name, you mentioned bonds because Chinese are, the Chinese are a large buyer of our bonds, and there's other things that are already coming into play, like the strong dollar and the weakening you want. I well, think maybe they'll the buy our Patriot bonds. <laughs> <laughs> well, <that'd be> <laughs> I, I think what the right. Trump administration really needs to do is stop targeting a specific dollar amount in terms of we want our trade imbalance to be X instead of Y, and instead Bingo. get very specific on things that they can change and things that we want, not this blanket, let's beat them by 10 points. No, <laughs> I, yeah, we, have to, I, we have to have a specific set of, of targets there.